So in this video, we're going to go through the Laplace transform and the Laplace representation of the state space control represent of the state space control uh, representation equations. Let's put them up again so that we know them and we can walk through them on how we would go about thinking about transforming these into the Laplace domain. So we've got x dot of, at, of t is equal to a x of t plus b u of t and we've got y of t is equal to c x of t and just for the sake of simplicity i'm not going to describe d the feed forward matrix because it's not that interesting we don't usually use it and all it's going to do is add just a little bit more messiness to the to the math so we'll leave it at this for now and we want to now take these equations and convert them into the Laplace domain. And so when we do that, we're going to get X, right? Capital X dot, but it's not dot anymore. It's S of X, because that's what happens when you take the derivative. So S times X of S is equal to A times capital X of S plus B U of S. That's the Laplace representation, the Laplace transform of this equation on top. And then just, just to be complete, we have Y of T and we can transform that as well. So Y of S is equal to C X of s. And now our goal is to find the transfer function of the control system and the states and the, in the state states representation. And so to do so, we're going to end up taking y of s, trying to find out we're going to the goal is to get to an expression where we have y oops. Close that back. Where we have y of s over u of s, right? If we have this expression and we figure out what that equals, then we have created the transfer function and we found the transfer function for the system. And once we know the transfer function for an LTI system, then we know everything about the system, right? That's always the goal is to find the transfer function if it's LTI. So let's think about how we would go about doing that. Well, this is the place to start because there's factors, variables here that we can factor. So let's divide up again the space and work through this. So we've got over here, we've got S, X, S, minus, and we're just going to pull this over to the other side, A, X of S is equal to B, U, of s and now what we're going to do is we're going to factor out this x of s but because a here is matrix multiplication we have to keep the order intact so this becomes s times the identity matrix minus a times x of s is equal to b u of s and now what we're going to do is we are going to get this on the other side by taking its inverse. So we're going to multiply by the inverse of SI minus A over on this side and SI minus A over on this side. And so we're going to get on the left side, it's just going to cancel out. So we're going to get X of S is equal to SI minus A inverse times B U of S. And so now we have an equation that's in terms of X of S is equal to something. And now that we have that, we can go in and substitute this in for C, uh, for X of S on this side, for, the, for Y of S. So now we're gonna substitute Y of S is equal to C times all of this. 
So it's C times S I minus A to the negative one times B U of S. And because the U of S is just a vector and not a matrix, we can simply divide by it without causing too much harm. And so we get Y of S over U of S is equal to C times S in uh, S times the identity matrix minus A inverse B. And so this represents the transfer function for the state space system where C, A, and B are matrices and the matrices we talked about beforehand. Now, there is a trick that we're going to use to re-represent this inverse in a much easier way to describe it. Mostly because this is not easy or simple to describe. And so I'm gonna introduce, I'm gonna call upon a matrix formula that is a little out there, but there will be additional videos that unpack uh, how, what this means. The inverse of a matrix, M, is equal to the adjugate or the classical adjoint of that matrix divided by the determinant of that matrix. This may seem like it came out of nowhere, but it is just a matrix property. Don't worry too much about it. But again, there will be, there will be additional videos that, that help unpack how this is happening. And what we're gonna do is look at this, this state right here, SI minus A, right? S times the identity matrix minus A inverse is just another matrix. So it is M to the inverse. And so that means we can substitute in for it the adjugate of M over M or the classical adjoint of them, same thing. And so let's go ahead and do that. And what we're gonna get is an equation that is now, let's go back to the same color. This is gonna be equal to C times the adjoint, classical adjoint of, oops, of S minus I, no, I'm sorry, SI minus A times B over the determinant of S I minus A. Now you might look at this and say, well, why on earth did we do this? All this does is make it more complicated. We did this for a very, very specific reason. Take a look at what we see down here. S I minus A, and it's the determinant of S I minus A. If you recall the discussion about fixed points, stability, or if you've ever taken, or go think even back to linear algebra and eigenvalues. If you substitute here, if we substitute S for lambda, right? Then lambda I minus A, the determinant of lambda I minus A is what? That's the equation by which you find the eigenvalues of A. That's not an accident. That was done very intentionally. And further, recognize that this is a transfer function. Transfer function. If this is a transfer function, then what do we know about things that are represented as a numerator and denominator pair. We know that then that these things on top are the zeros, right? If we set this equal to zero, then we will find the, the numerator zero, then we'll find the zeros of the transfer function. And if we set this side equal to zero, then we get the poles. And what is the equation for taking the determinant of S I minus A or lambda I minus A and setting it equal to zero? That is exactly the equation for finding the eigenvalues of A. And so 
comes full circle, right? In the state space control system representation of a, of a linear time invariant control system, the state matrix A is centrally integrated into the transfer function of the system. And only it and only it determines the stability of the system. C, B don't have any control at all, have no effect on the stability of the system. Only A, A and only A determine the stability because that's what's in the denominator of the transfer function. And even more importantly, it isn't just that A controls it, it's that the eigenvalues of A are the poles of the transfer function. That, deter that, that deserves repeating. This, this is the high, the high level summary. The eigenvalues of A are the poles of the transfer function. And more importantly, are the poles of the system itself because the transfer function defines the behavior of the system. And that is a fundamentally powerful conclusion. Just like in a pure dynamical system where only this was described, right? In a conventional linear dynamical system, we only have that component to worry about. Similarly, in that expression, the Poincaré diagram was the, the behavior of the Poincaré diagram was all about the eigenvalues of A. Well, guess what? In the larger control system discussion, nothing has changed. Sure, we have additional terms that define how the input maps onto the state system. Output matrix defines the output of the state you know, multiplied by C defines the output of the signal itself the output of the system, fundamentally, the behavior of our system, whether or not it is stable, is all comes down to whether or not the eigenvalue, what the eigenvalues of A are. Why? Because that's what determines the fixed points. If, if the eigenvalues of A are greater than zero, then you're going to end up in a situation where you, the, where the solution to this differential equation has the form has the form a e to the lambda t and if lambda is greater than zero on the real side guess what this explodes and that's why the right hand the right side of the poincare diagram has a whole bunch of is all nothing but sources right either spiral sources if they're complex eigenvalues or just straight sources that are just bounding off into infinity that's what it means to have positive eigenvalues right because the, the poles of the, of the denominator of the transfer function are positive, right? Lie on the, on the right side of the, of, the complex, of the complex plane. Similarly, when the eigenvalues are negative, you're now in a stable system because e to the lambda t is negative and this entire thing is going to decay no matter what input gets provided. This is how the Laplace transform can take a messy, difficult to understand time domain set of equations and convert them into the Laplace domain as functions of S. And then when running through some algebra, you end up with this very elegant expression for the transfer function of the control system such that the denominator, when solving, when setting it to zero to find the poles, just turns out to be the equation for finding the, for the finding the eigenvalues of A. So the complex frequency eigenvalues of A, because that's what S comes out to be here, tells you whether or not the system is stable or unstable. And that, in my opinion, is a very cool result. <laughs>